Well, welcome back everyone to our series on the changing standards. I'm Mike Bloom, this is Russ, and we are from Eagle Force. Uh, going over all these different changes, we're several episodes into this now. If you missed any of them, you can go back and get caught up. We've covered uh, why the standards are changing. We're taking sort of a holistic look at this, at, at the change itself, and uh, we'll be breaking down some of these individual changes, getting into some good detail. Um, but we're, we're, we're continuing on our discussion at this point with a little bit of an overview. And where we, wanna, where we left off last week, we're going to start this week, how they got 10 clauses out of the pre-existing eight clauses. Yes. And I didn't bring my elephant this time. So. Good. <laughs> the film crew is very happy about that. <laughs> At any rate, what, they got the eight clauses, uh, 10, by taking a meat cleaver and... <laughs> Well, what they did was, when you, as we discussed, the first three clauses are very, they're titled exactly the same, and when you look at the clauses, they're very similar. There are minor changes in there. Clause four is a head scratcher. They went from quality management system to context of the organization. Um, again, as we discussed last time, the really emphasis is on amplifying and magnifying the process approach, which we're going to pick that up when we get breaking into the standards. Oh, a little bit. It's no news um, for you aerospace and automotive folks. Um, it's big news for ISO. Um, however, it will affect everybody because the, those changes are going to be incorporated, as we discussed last time, into all the requirements. And um, aerospace automotive are focused like a laser on this process management approach. So that's going to be a, a, a big deal. So. That's the first four clauses, but where they got eight out of ten, they, here's where they got the next two. They, they took the clause five, which was management responsibility, and chopped, broke it into two. The first part is leadership, which makes sense. It was embedded in to the uh, management responsibility before, but now the clause six is planning, and planning was actually in the in the, the old old clause five, but you know I'm back and forth. So many clauses are going to get twisted around the <laughs> axle here. But the the planning is is now been amplified, and it is it's going to be different for everybody. Um, so that's a significant yeah, change. There's some dramatic changes in that. We kind of talked a little bit before in a past episode about uh, planning as far as objectives are, are concerned. Um, now that's that's really kind of broken out. The way that it was before. Sure, it, it's expanded a lot. It'll be we're going to cover that in an, another episode yeah. in in quite a bit of detail. So hopefully that'll help you. And um, so, but all but for all the changes are, that we've talked about are going to affect all, but they're going to be obviously more for their for our ISO friends. Mm -hmm. So you've got clause four context of the organization. You got clause five leadership, and you got clause six, which is planning. Yeah, so. it kind of looks like Clause 7 uh, resources mirrors Clause 6 resource management to a certain extent. I, I agree with you. It does. It's very, very similar. Um, again, once you get in there, you're going to find some words change and some, and some interpretation may change along with it. One of the things that's changed, though, is they've, they've taken and they've added um, calibration, which was in Clause 7, the Product service realization, they, product realization. They've taken it and they put it into, into services. I mean, mm. into resources. Yeah. Well, actually, it makes more sense there anyway. It's, it's really not a core process unless, of course, you're a calibration house. Right. But, but it's a support process and it would make sense under under the uh, resources. So clause eight now, is replaces the clause seven. Clause eight is called operations, whereas clause seven was product realization. So what they're really pretty much the same. There are some changes once you get into the individual clauses, but the clauses are product and or service planning, um, sales, um, there's design, purchasing, there's product and service provision. And then the thing that they added in, is they've added control of non-conforming services or, or products into the standard that was located in another section before. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting how uh, you'll you'll notice the verbiage of a lot of this stuff includes the term the specific term services. You see that quite a bit. 
That's true, and, and in fact, one of the reasons for changing the standard, the standard itself says one of the primary reasons was they wanted to encourage the adoption of this management system into companies that are service, whether it's medical or I don't care if you're running a pizza shop. Mm -hmm. This You should be able to take the management principles that are outlined in the standard and apply it to any business, um, which is why it works so well for aerospace defense because they can apply it to that kind of business. And again, as we've always said, the standard is, it's um, descriptive, not prescriptive. So it, this describes what must be contained in your management system, but it's up to you not, how to do how, it. How to do it, yeah, yeah, that's correct. So one of the things that um, we're looking at is they, they've, taken the, they've taken clause eight, whack, and cut it in half, and that's where they the other two they got. They, they, they take clause eight, which was measurement, analysis, improvement. Is They've taken now there's clause nine, which is performance evaluation, and clause 10, which is improvement. They divided those two. Can you describe a little bit what they mean by performance evaluation? Okay. This actually makes some sense what they did. It's, it's all the things that you need to evaluate performance of your organization. So which includes both inspection of your product or services to see if it complies with requirements. So the first thing is service and, and uh, product inspection. It also includes process performance evaluation, which was in the old standard under, under its own clause 823. Um, much the same, even expanded. Uh, they also include, interestingly enough, internal audits, which is a method a key method for evaluating mm -hmm. your processes and your system, and management review, which is, you're all familiar with that, is looking, the management looks at the overall system and decides is, this, is it suitable and effective or do we need to make some significant changes. Mm. So for clause 10, uh, improvement, what's that, what's the gist of that one? Well, um, clause 10 really is covering corrective action and continual improvement. Um, they, They've deleted um, preventive action, and it is, as, which we all knew was coming. Um, it's been really replaced by risk management and risk-based thinking, which we we're going to talk about in the next episode, I think, or one after that. But we're going to talk about the risk-based thinking, and then we're going to look at how that is actually managed in each one of the clauses as we go through it to uh, to eliminate the, the the preventative action. Yeah. I think it's important to know or, or to keep in mind that corrective action is still uh, still an important part of the standards. Well, you're right, Mike. It, it really is more important than ever. And one of the significant things that we've seen, all of us at Eagle Force, and at, both in working with a lot of clients and seeing a lot of companies, but even more as an auditor getting into hundreds of organizations, is Many organizations really struggle with corrective action, mm -hmm. and they really struggle in, 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 in two areas. Number one is, is, is identifying root cause or causes uh, and, or the sequence of those events that caused the problem. And consequently, they also had a real tough time identifying corrective actions. Yeah. So what you had was if you, if you got a, the whole idea was to prevent recurrence, but if you got a problem and you and the, the, a lot of the methods that were out there were talking about five whys and things that don't really work all that well. Yeah. But one of the, it, if you've got a preventive, if you've got a problem and you're trying to solve it and you don't, and you don't have a good tool to do it, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to happen again and again. That, that's right. Which is the whole idea that recurrence is supposed to obviously prevent. So we see that all the time. So one of the things I would encourage you is is to check out our website. We've created a what we consider a um, state-of-the-art corrective action process mm. that helps you identify both root cause and identify a, a good, a, the best corrective action to fit your circumstances yeah. at the time. Uh, so that's, uh, we, we, a couple episodes ago, we opened this up saying we're going to take a look at the whole elephant. And, and I wasn't allowed to bring my elephant this time. <laughs> You're banned from <laughs> elephant bringing. Uh, so... So this is pretty much it. That's that's kind of the whole elephant, right? Yeah, uh, more or less. So we we took a high level view of it, and one thing I think we might want to do now before we take a dive into the standard, which we do want to do, is take a look at some of the key concepts 
that are, that the whole revision of the standard was built around. So look, we'll take a look at some of those and then we'll, we'll, we'll be ready to really take a dive into the standard. Sounds good. So that'll do it for this week. Uh, we, we, again, we welcome and we invite uh, any questions that you guys have, if there's something specific that you want to know about your organization, your situation, or, or certain changes that you're not quite sure about, ask them away. Uh, we'd love to answer them here on the show. You can, you can email us, you can contact us on our website, um, any way that you can... Morse code? If you know Morse code, by all means, fire away. Uh, send your questions in to us, we'd love to answer them, and uh, we will be back in a week, and we will see you then. And the coffee will be hot. <laughs>